Okay, in today's video I'm going to show you how to make custom control changes to the transmitter of the Sky Viper V2450 GPS. My main reason for buying this drone is this interface right here. This is the Sky Viper web server. What it allows you to do is go in there and change not only uh, transmitter controls, but it also lets you go into the quad itself and change its actual flight behavior. Uh, that can be basically how fast it flies, how steep it goes into turns, um, how it behaves while you have it in different GPS modes. So basically it allows a really deep level of customization that no other retail quad that I know of allows you to do. So I think actually to, to do even better, you'd probably have to go up to the DJI level as far as the depth of customization goes. And there's other Sky Viper or there's other GPS drones that are in this price range, but none of them actually give you uh, the depth of customization that Sky Viper offers on the V2450 GPS. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how, first off, how to connect to the Sky Viper web server. And this is uh, the interface that allows you to make all these changes, but the first thing you have to do is you're going to have to connect to your Sky Viper. So the first thing that you want to do is make sure you have the micro SD card in the quad. You want to make sure that's in, all the way in, ready to record video, whatever you want to do. Um, that's very important. The second thing that you need to do is just simply plug in the battery. Once it's on, it's going to start transmitting a Wi-Fi signal. And then what you're going to want to do is connect your computer to the Wi-Fi signal. So once your quadcopter is on, you need to connect to it via Wi-Fi. So I personally prefer using a laptop just because it's more transportable. So you're going to go to Sky Viper GPS and you're going to hit connect. Then you need to open up your web browser and you're going to type in this address. 192.168.99.1 So what this does is this, now you're directly connected to the quad. The changes you make now in here are going to stay with the quad until you go back and change them again. So this is what takes you to the transmitter customization menu. And what it basically is showing you is where it says T mode action two, three, four, five, six. Those are buttons on your controller. So the very top button this is the action taken for the left action button. The left action button is the top left shoulder button on your transmitter. And so basically, as you can see, there's all kinds of different changes that you can make inside of this interface. T mode left button. What this does is it allows you to cycle basically toggle different modes that you've set into the controller. The two modes by default are indoor and GPS mode. I'm interested in acro mode. That was what I had to have right away. So T mode action two is the upper right camera button. This is basically for taking pictures. Well, that's all it's for. I'm not interested in taking pictures, so I made that my acro button. So all I have to do is click that top right shoulder button and I'm going to be in acro mode. But I can change modes again just by going back to the bottom left mode button and that allows me to cycle through modes. So that mode button now I can cycle from GPS to indoor to acro mode. And, uh, and like I said before previously in my last video, acro mode is a huge deal. T mode action four, five, and six, those are actually combinations of buttons. So you could have it to where you would hold the mode button down, then hit T mode action two, the upper right, and it would change to a different mode. I made up my mind pretty early on that I didn't want to use button combinations just because I didn't want to be like in a tough situation and have to go, okay, do I hit mode 
pull down mode and then hit T mode action two or T mode action one. I just wanted to keep it simple. But if you feel like you can handle it, it would definitely open up a lot of different mode options for you. Okay, a drone video just isn't complete unless you put up a little bit of flight footage. So I wanted to take it out on a day that was like the worst day possible to fly that I could get. And so on this day, the average wind, temp wind speed, not temperature, speed was 15 miles per hour. And I was getting gusts of 25 miles per hour. And if you'll notice while it's up here, it's a lot of times it's actually angled in one direction and that's just because it's pitching to try and offset how much wind is coming at it so like right now it's just pitching really hard because I've got a strong wind coming in and then when the gust backs off it kind of levels off and then when it comes back it it pitches over again and uh, <laughs> this is this is a pretty short flight too but I was so proud of this drone for doing this because this is what this is one of the big advantages of a GPS quad is that you can put it up in the air and you can actually just like you just set the controller down if you want. I didn't hear. I was actually watching it very carefully, but I just, still I'm just uh, I just wanted to point out that yes, it can handle a 25 mile per hour wind. I wouldn't advise it, but it did it, and here's proof of it. But anyway, so um, while I was flying it, I took a screen grab. So the the small picture in the lower right hand corner is the uh, the HUD of the Wi-Fi app as well as the um, video. So as you can see, the video doesn't really keep up very well. Um, it's unfortunate that the Wi-Fi just isn't quite where it needs to be just yet, but there is some stuff that I wanted to point out on the HUD. For instance, if you look at the middle upper middle of the screen there, that's actually a compass. And having a compass is actually pretty handy when the quad's up high and let's just say you need to manually bring it down it actually is showing you what direction the quads pointed in because this quad doesn't use headless mode as far as I know but anyway uh, you and the here on the bottom you can see where it says mode RTL so that is I have it in return to land mode and it was really having a dog of the time I think what it, it didn't want to do was it didn't want to cut power to the motors when such a strong wind was coming in because it felt like it absolutely had to return to the exact spot it landed in where at this point I just wanted to get it on the ground and it was sitting there trying to cut power and then fly to a spot on the ground and it it, it was definitely having trouble with it but that does show you that the mode changes are going to show on your phone HUD so when you have the Wi-Fi app it's actually really useful to have it on so you can kind of refer back to it and see what is going on with your quads like you might change modes and not realize it or for instance you're kind of if you're trying to get an idea of how far away from home you are if it's up to date then it's going to be telling you all the time the relative distance of the quad from where it launched from that's basically so when you set the quad down and you turn on the GPS and it starts locating satellites, that's going to be its home point, and that's something that's important to remember. But anyway, that's all I got for today. And Okay, so this is a little preview of my next video. This is the Mission Planner interface. And in order to make Mission Planner work, you're going to have to get into the Sky Viper web server and make a few changes. It isn't ultra complicated but it does require a few extra steps. Essentially what Mission Planner does is it lets you plot a course in Mission Planner and then you're gonna connect to your quad via Mission Planner and you're gonna start what's called a mission. And once you start that mission, the quad is gonna follow the directions that you give to it. And I wouldn't say it's ultra complicated, but you definitely, I think it's a good first step to get yourself familiar on the Sky Viper web server feel comfortable making changes and then test out those changes you know go to a wide open area take the quad up and see what effects 
the little tweaks and changes that you've made in the web server, how that affects flight, make sure that you're comfortable changing between modes, um, just practice a little bit. And my next video is going to be all about Mission Planner and hopefully I'll have a whole mission flown and, and footage of that. And uh, so anyway, this has been a really cool experience. I bought this quad because it's so deep and there's so much to do on it. And uh, there's been a lot of idea sharing and um, uh, stuff I've learned from other people from the first video I posted on this drone. So um, if you're kind of on the fence about buying it, I'm still recommending it. I still think it's uh, really neat. And you know, I'm just barely getting into it right now. So there's a lot of cool stuff left to do on it. So yeah, anyway, uh, next video is gonna be Mission Planner and I appreciate all the views and comments and uh, I welcome all feedback. So whatever you have to add or questions you might have, uh, go ahead and post them. That's all I got for today. Thanks for watching.